Hello, everyone, and welcome aboard the Walt Disney World Transportation System. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Double Dose of Disney podcast. My name is Brittany, and I'm joined here by my co-host and amazing husband, Tony. On our first episode, we were talking about our um, trip to Walt Disney World back in 2020, and we arrived to Disney on the night of the Super Bowl. Um, When Tony and I got married, we got married on the same weekend as the Super Bowl weekend. So every anniversary, it would like always fall around the Super Bowl. So we kind of got good at finding places to go watch games. And that was really no different at Disney. Um, the first time we went to Walt Disney World, I researched for hours trying to find places to watch sporting games from. And I really was finding like no answers to anything. So we thought about, like, that would be a really good episode to do. I know that one of the the best things about going to Walt Disney World is really getting to immerse yourself in that bubble, but at the same time, like, also getting to incorporate things that you love um, from home or getting to watch a big sports game or something like that can really help you create, like, these lasting memories. Yeah, and except on an off day, too, it's good to kind of have a heads up or nowhere to go if you wanted to see some kind of sporting event, not just football, but or whatever, you know, and have a, you know, just a couple of tips and you know what you're getting into ahead of time. So that's what we're here to do. We're going to throw a couple of them out, probably buy us on a couple of them. <laughs> we'll go through a few of them and see what you think. Yeah, so one of my favorite things to say about Disney is there's over 400 different places to grab food from, and that obviously includes snack stands, but... Um, there's so many different table service locations, so many different quick service locations on Disney property, whether you are, um, at Disney Springs, you're at the boardwalk, you're, um, at one of the parks, you're at one of the resorts, there's so many different places you can go to. But if you are looking to kind of like take time during your vacation to enjoy a meal, enjoy a good atmosphere and to get in time to like watch your favorite sports team whether it's a big game, it's a competition, whatever it is, um, we compiled a list of six places at Disney World that would be great to watch games from. So, or if you just want to know where the TVs are at, this is kind of, <laughs> kind of the same thing. Yeah, because I guess, to find a TV, where am I going to find it at? And because I guess that's kind of the other thing at Disney. There's not a ton of TVs anywhere, and that was what I was having trouble coming across. Um, during our first trip, I was like, where can we even find a TV at Disney World? Well, for us, it wasn't that big a deal. We kind of, you, you go to Disney to get away from the, the usual sit back, relax, and watch TV. For us, it wasn't a big deal. That was a huge deal. I had to plan our flights around well, when the game was. I usually. <laughs> so going into our first one. Going into our first one. So on, our, on our first trip was the Boathouse, which we actually go to just to eat every time. Our first first day we get there, we're flying and we eat at Boathouse. But this one is the first one we got on our list here. And it's not a huge place, so that is a kind of a downfall. And the only place they do have TVs is right when you walk in on the Oyster, Oyster Bar and the bar. But yeah. you can't see it from the whole room, but it gets packed there. So that's the only thing. Yeah, one of the things about the Boathouse... So the Boathouse is at Disney Springs in the landing section of Disney Springs. It's right next to uh, Jacques Lindsay's Hangar Bar. And the Boathouse has American food. They have steaks. They have oysters. They actually have their own line of steaks. Yeah. Um, they're the biggest oyster bar in Central Florida. You can actually get the oysters there... Um, you can pay for them individually instead of having to get like a dozen of them because they have several different kinds of oysters that you can get too. So when you go to the boathouse, I personally recommend always booking the boathouse through open table. It's always easier to get a reservation that way. Um, that's frequently what I tell my clients to do. That's what we personally do. And when we went to the boathouse and watched the Super Bowl from there, I just asked to be seated somewhere, for us to be seated somewhere where we could see the TVs. They were able to the accommodate bar, the bar to that. The full in that area, but we were still able to see for our table, and it was still fine. If you're somebody who wants to be sitting at the ta- at the TV in front of the TV, that's unless you get there early, it's probably not a good spot to be for that. But if you just want to ca- casually be glancing at the TV and know what's going on, it's fine. Yeah, and I don't think, I think when we went to watch it, they had the sound on, right? 
at the time when it was on. The, the game was, yeah. So, because it was the Super Bowl, they had the sound on. I would assume that most normal, like, weekends, they probably don't have the sound running in that restaurant. Um, it's probably muted, but you can still watch the game from there. The food is great there. The um, so We've always had great service there. And one of my things that I like about Disney, I mentioned this in my t- TikToks. I don't know that I've talked about this on the podcast, but um, in everyday life, like I eat gluten and dairy free and that's kind of how, that's how we eat here at home. So we try to stick to that on vacation. One of the things that I love about the boathouse is 90% of their menu can be made to accommodate a gluten free diet. Um, you just speak to the, um, cast member and let them know and they'll go back and talk to the chef and they'll bring out a menu that's personalized to you showing you which items they can accommodate to i think last time we were there in february i had um it was like a gluten-free version of coconut shrimp so it was really just like grilled shrimp tossed with a little bit of coconut on it but they still i always feel like the boathouse goes above and beyond to like accommodate everything and to getting watch a game that from there is really fun too and they have those like vintage boats in just a really cool place but it, it is middle to upper scale price wise it's, well, it's, it's considered a signature restaurant at disney so they have your oysters they have all your typical caesar salad wedges they have your fish plates they have we've probably had a majority of this list of the, on their menu it's pretty pretty decent sized menu they have your lobster bisque they have a little bit of their sandwiches, and they have all your steaks, so they, you know, you can you can still go there on a budget and be fine, but just know it's probably a little bit, it's not, it's not a bar and grillish type place, it's a little fancier. Right, it, yeah, it is a little bit more fa- fancier, it's owned by, I want to say it's owned by the Gibson Group, um, because they have their own line of steaks, uh, I think they're called like Gibson Steaks. And that's kind of one of the perks of eating there, uh, or that's kind of one of the things that they're like known for there. Um, like I said, it once the Disney Dining Plan returns in 2024, it will be a two credit uh, table service meal because it's considered signature. Um, on and overall, the just the atmosphere, and you're on the water there watching the watching the car slash boats dock and ramp up and take off is a cool little little perk um but moving on number two so we we, on our first trip to disney we watched the super bowl from the boathouse the second trip to disney we watched the super bowl from splitsville splitsville is located on the west side of disney springs so if you are coming into disney springs and if you're getting dropped off by the bus it's going to be on the far left hand side closer to like house of blues and stuff like that Splitsville is actually a bowling alley. It's a multi-story bowling alley. They have a pretty large menu. Um, They got nachos. They have burger sliders. They have sushi. They have fish and chips. They got a taco bowl. They have a little bit of everything. And I think that's kind of what we did when we went there. We had kind of a little variety of everything. We were upstairs. Yeah, we see. So I actually wanted us to eat there our first trip when we went in 2020. And I wasn't able to get us a reservation there. For 2021, I was able to. And we just, I just, we were seated upstairs in the um, upstairs area. There's TVs throughout. So there, it's a two-story building. And there's an outdoor patio area that has TVs. There's downstairs that has TVs. There's an upstairs area that has TVs. And then there's also an upstairs patio that has TVs as well. When we went there, we got the nachos. We also got the sushi the to try. The nachos? Yeah, and and the nacho plate was huge, and we got the suit. We got lots of, yeah, lots of shareables, and this one's reasonably priced too. It's not a, it's kind of right in the middle, but a lot of shareable plates, and yeah, it's it's got a big, it's got a big menu, a lot of variety. Upstairs, a full bar. Yeah, and I want to say I want to say that we got their California Crunch Roll whenever we tried it. Um, because we kind of got that toward like the end of our meal, but their sushi was great too. Um, so you really can't go wrong like watching the game there if you're trying to find like a fun atmosphere that's got like Tony said a lot of like shareable options and stuff like that. Splitsville is good, and it's probably going to be a little bit more affordable than the Boathouse. Um, it's also if you're bowling. 
We didn't bowl that time. I no. Mean, we, we, were, we were definitely jealous we weren't bowling. We were sitting there watching everybody bowl. Were we? <laughs> You're right in the middle of the action. <laughs> next time. There's always a next time. That's true. It was It was just a, it was a really fun atmosphere. Um, and that time when we watched the Super Bowl from there, it was the Super Bowl, remember, was in Tampa. So there were um, so there was a ton of people that were like watching the games and stuff like that. So this is a, this is a Super Bowl watching watching episode. Huh? Well, I guess it doesn't have to be Super Bowl, but that's like the biggest game of the year. You tailor it to you. Yeah. Um, the next one you want to talk about? Uh, the next one we have is Big River Grill, and it is at the Boardwalk. We have not watched a game there, but we yeah we did we did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we, okay. we watched the game there in um september part of a game yeah we um that's one of our favorite so tony loves football and i always try to incorporate things into like i wanted him to love disney as much as i knew that i did and so i wanted to incorporate that into our vacations and then once he was already hooked on it i was like well let's keep doing that like that makes it fun so last year in september when we were there i don't remember who was playing it wasn't a big game but one of the things we like to do on our Animal Kingdom day is like eat somewhere outside the parks for dinner. And that night we went over to Big River Grill. Um, like Tony said, it's at the boardwalk. It's nothing fancy. It's um, they don't even take res- you don't have they don't do reservations through the Disney World website. You have to call the hostess stand to make reservations. And as a side note, like we had reservations, but we didn't need them. Yeah. I think it's a, kind of like a three room set of long lives. They have a, they do have a bar. You can sit at it. Probably only has 10 or 12 spots to sit at. They do have TV. They have TVs pretty kind of much anywhere you sit. You can pretty much see a TV. So this is a place that if you're at Disney world and you're like, Oh, this game's on that I want to see. This is a good place to go watch that app because it's more of like a sport, like a sports bar atmosphere where they're yeah, probably this is more of kind of a kind of it's not a bar, but it's a no. kind of more of a sport. They do brew their own beer. Oh yeah, they do. So they, that's a kind of a high, I would say. With the food for us, it's kind of in the middle ish price wise, and we just felt like it was kind of there's better options. There, so don't expect to go there and get some gourmet dinner there. It's just kind of hang out, have a beer, have an appetizer, get something. It's kind of basic stuff. And like Tony said, it's not a big it's not a big restaurant at all. But remember we were talking to our waiter and he said you had asked him like why they don't have wings on their menu. That's what I was just looking at because I forgot they didn't have them. <laughs> but he said that they don't have is it a fryer or an oven? At the time when we were there, and they still don't have them. There was a piece of equipment they didn't have in the back because it was just too small to make it happen. So he said that it was a really small kitchen and that they had been there for a long time. But I also have heard that Big River Girl is kind of a chain restaurant, and I think that they have another location in Tennessee somewhere. Um, but like Tony said, overall, it wasn't... It wasn't. I think you got a salad. Maybe? Yeah, I got the Santa Fe Ranch chicken salad. It wasn't bad, but... If I'm being honest, I would compare it to like Chili's. Like I, that's that's the expectations I would go in with is that it's like a Chili's. You're going there to just like hang out and, and watch a game. Chili's might have a, a wing up because they got the wings. <laughs> well, that's true. But the cool thing is you're on the boardwalk. So what I liked about it was we watched the game. We also could see the fireworks going off. At the time, it was Harmonious and Epcot um because we were at the boardwalk so it was a really cool atmosphere and then we left from watching the game and there were the street performers that were performing tony was a part of one of the magic shows so it was a really fun night um it's a really fun experience and if you're looking for somewhere more casual i would say this is a good place the biggest thing is why we're doing just to know what you're getting into right you know if this is fine up reality i mean the, the of where you're at too makes it kind of really cool because you're on the boardwalk yeah so, like, for us, I don't really think we knew we were getting into We weren't, like, disappointed, but we thought it was going to be a little bit better than it was. But just know what you're getting into in all these all these spots, first of all, and what they have to offer. I had heard from other people before we went there that it wasn't going to be anything stellar. But I had always actually kind of wanted to go there because I also knew that it was a microbrewery. Right? It's a microbrewery? They brew their own craft beer? They do. Um, and so I figured that Tony, like, that would be something that Tony would enjoy too. And that's the only one on Disney property. So I was like, well, that'd be cool to go to. So it was fun. It was a fun experience. Um, but like you said, you just are learning more about where the options are. So they don't list their beers, I guess, because they rotate them so often. It says just to ask your server when you go. So that's good. I mean, at least, at least it's always something new. They won't even put on the menu. So that's true. Always something different in the beer section. 
Okay, the next one is actually at our favorite of all favorite resorts, um, Rick's Sports Bar and Grill. So we have never watched a game from Rick's Sports Bar and Grill. This is located at Coronado Springs Resort. But um, we've eaten here a couple times. We stayed there back in 2021. And that trip, like, we just kept extending it out because we loved Coronado so much. We ate at Rick's Sports Bar for breakfast. Um, but some of the things, we also ate there for lunch. We got their, are they called wachos? They're their waffle, they're their waffle fry nachos. That is right on the front page. <laughs> if you go to Disney World, it's on the front page is what they advertise on there. But this might be the one that has the most TVs. This is more of your kind of traditional bar feel-ish in it. They, they have, have tables away from bar. the they bar. They tables so you can sit away from the bar. So it's not like you're out of the bar. But it says it has 31 state-of-the-art TVs. So it may have the most TVs out of all these. Yeah, and so when we went there, um, we ate there for breakfast the first, like our first park day, and then we ate there for lunch on the day of the Super Bowl, and um, we were watching, I guess, what was it, like pregame coverage and stuff like yeah, that. We, we easily just walked up and sat at the bar and had a burger. Yeah, you don't necessarily, they do offer um, advanced dining reservations through the Disney World app, but you don't necessarily need them for this location. You probably would, like if it's like a big game or something like that. They actually have breakfast though too. That's another cool thing about this. We've spot. eaten their breakfast before. So they have a pretty good little spread of omelets and... Remember their breakfast? Mm-hmm. It's good. <laughs> they um so a fun fact about rick's sports bar and girl tony and i talk to the cast members everywhere we go that's one of the things that we love about disney and when we went to go eat lunch there on the day of the super bowl we were talking to one of the cast members and she said that that location actually used to be a karaoke bar um which is really funny because it's kind of like in the middle or of their dance. lobby it turned into a dance some kind of dance at night. But yeah, and so when you're sitting, if you're if you're in the restaurant to the right hand side, you'll see like a circular area, and it still has like disco lights or something like in it, and that's where like the like dance club or whatever yeah, used if you've to ever be. Been a part of the dance? Comment, and let us know. Yeah. So, but Rick Sports Bar is really good. I remember. Um, I think I got the burger there, or I got one of the sandwiches. All of their food is really good. Like I liked their avocado toast for breakfast. Like they had a lot of great stuff there. So they have yeah, they ever watch those crispy waffle fries loaded with house blend queso, blanco bacon, and scallions. They they do have wings here. Oh, and they actually have a list of mocktails. Which, being a currently pregnant person, that's really cool too. Um, one of the things too about Rick Sports Bar, so Coronado Springs is a lot of the dining locations there are, um, some of the dining locations there are not run by Disney. So Disney dining locations always offer allergy menus. Um, and at Rick Sports Bar, they don't have those on the menu, but they still have like, let's say you're wanting like a burger or something like that, and you just don't want like gluten-free bread. Um, you can, or you want gluten-free bread, you can always request that. Um, you can also speak to a chef if you have an allergy or something. For me, it's just like, I prefer not to eat gluten. It doesn't make me feel good. So, um, I was able to just like ask a cast member, like, Hey, do y'all have gluten-free bread for the avocado toast? And they were able to accommodate to that. Overall solid choice. Yes. Size wise, it's a little kind of a, I'm going to say smaller too, but it's, you know. It's in the lobby of a hotel, um, which at Coronado Springs, it's a big lobby. Like, it's kind of off the lobby, across from the food court area. Overall, solid. Yes. Solid place. The next one is, you want to talk about that one? City Works, <laughs> Disney Springs. Yeah, it's in the west side of Disney Springs, so it's going to be located in the same area as Splitsville. Um, this is, it's officially called City Works Eatery and Poor House. Um, we have not ever made it to this location. We've walked by several times, but City Works, if you are at Disney Springs and you are looking for a traditional take on a, like a sports bar that you would find, let's say like in a big city or something like that with lots of TVs and stuff like that. That's what City Works reminds me of. There's that place, it's the NBC Sports Bar at um, Universal City Walk, and that's what this place, that's what City Works reminds me of. Uh, the same thing, they have a full bar. Looks like they have a wide variety of beers. 
Yeah, they have a wide variety of beers. They have a full bar. Um, they have indoor and outdoor seating there. Um, they are kind of like... It's a great place to go and just like kick back and relax. So it's going to be American food. It's going to be casual food. You can make dining reservations there through the Disney World um, website. And although I don't know that you necessarily need, need them, on Saturdays and Sundays, they offer brunch from open to three. Um, and then they also have like lunch and dinner throughout the week. Well, like they said, it says you've never seen bar food like this. <laughs> So a similar, similar vibe that you'll have at Rick's as far as food, but it looks like they have um, things like flatbreads. Yeah. A little like, bit different, a little couple more options, it looks like. Like they have like the duck nachos, kung pao cauliflower. They got a lot of little mini tacos, mighty tacos, barbecue tacos, chicken, tinga tacos. Tuna. The prices look like it's going to be a little bit more like the boathouse though. If you're looking at the prices like... Um, so a burger is gonna be like about twenty dollars. So this one's probably gonna be on our on our list next. Yeah, if we make it to Disney for the Super Bowl, next time we make it to Disney for the Super Bowl, it'll probably be on our list, or just to watch a game in general. And they have they have beer flights. They have a little bit of everything. Looks good. And I think their beer rotates out seasonally, right? It is seasonal. So yeah, they they keep on they bring in new stuff. Yeah. So. I would say if you're at Disney Springs, there's obviously several different places that you can choose from at Disney Springs. You can go to um, the Boathouse. You can go to Splitsville. You can go to City Works. If you're looking for more of a traditional dining experience, but you want to be able to catch the game during your meal, then the Boathouse would be your option. Um, but if you're wanting to be like immersed in like the sports like atmosphere, then I would say... City Works or Splitsville is probably going to be your place to go. And Splitsville, obviously, with having the bowling alley and stuff like you that there. You spend a lot more time there, too. So Where? At, at Splitsville. So if the, you're looking to make more of a day out of it, too, or a half a day, you can be in there for sure. One of the things I forgot to talk about at Splitsville is Splitsville also has a um, bar where they make like really cool drinks that they sell like in souvenir cups and stuff like that. Um, that ha- they look like blenders and stuff like that. You can sit, you can just walk up and sit outside a- at their bar and like watch TV too on the downstairs bar, or um, you can sit in the upstairs areas or downstairs. Um, I'm gonna talk about our last one, maybe Number our six favorite on one. On our list is Geyser's Point Bar and Grill at the Wilderness Lodge, which I would say is our other favorite resort besides Coronado. A lot of favorites. <laughs> I would say Wilderness Lodge is our favorite deluxe resort. Coronado is our favorite modern resort. So this resort. one's really cool because you're outside. Yeah. You're next to the water. It's a kind of a wraparound bar situation. And then the seats go around, wrap around that entire bar. And there's tr- there's extra seating by the by the water. There's some, some cozy little seats and couch yeah. Situations. Um. So, Guides Point Point Bar and Girl doesn't require dining reservations because it's technically considered a lounge, even though they have like a full menu that they offer. Um. So when we have gone there, we have just like walked up and asked if there's a wait. You can just walk up and get on like the walk up wait list. The last time we ate there was in February. We were leaving Animal Kingdom Lodge. And we had no plan. That was um. I had mentioned on the first episode. That we'll kind of do like rock, paper, scissors sometimes. Or just do like a spontaneous like dining place. And we ate at Geyser Point. When you eat at Geyser Point, one of the coolest things is obviously they have the TVs and stuff, which is great to watch games. But they also um, pump in the music for Happily Ever After at um, the time that that occurs at Magic Kingdom. So right now it's 920 and it's going back to like 9 and then it's going to be 830. Um, so if you're going there and you're wanting to catch a game, you can also kind of catch the fireworks too, which makes it like a double whammy. As they say it though, they classify it on their website as a poolside eatery featuring explore worthy bites, trails in spirits and stunning views of the bay. So it's not a place, it's by, it's an open air. Right. So it's not actual, uh, you know, a building. I don't think there, there's. I don't think there's a dress code. You may no. be able to walk up in there. You can walk in there in some in swim swimsuit. Suit. So you know, don't expect to go in there in a five piece suit and 
for a fine dinner. <laughs> no. It's but a nice the place. last time we ate there, um, we ate there. We just sat at a table that was closer to the water. Um, it was still underneath the patio, but closer to the water. And I got the um, I got the grilled portobello salad with the chicken. And um, I had like a glass of red wine. And you got, what did you get? The, did you get the bison burger? Um, I've had the bison burger. I don't know if it was that time. But Tony got like a burger and a beer and we were sitting there. It was just the cast member that we had. I wish I remembered her name too. She, I gave her a cast compliment afterward. She was so nice. Like she was talking to us about how she had met people and they moved down to Disney, like dream. And they, um, became friends and stuff like that. And she was talking to us about how she grew up in Disney or grew up in Orlando and has come to Disney her entire life. Like, it was such a, it was one of those, like, memorable experiences that just makes you love Disney even more. So getting to watch a game there would just kind of enhance that experience. They also, for their kids, have, um, they have cornhole, and they have washerboards, too. Which is kind of for the resort, but anybody can go and Yeah, anybody can go and play them. And then, like we talked about in in other episodes, no matter where you're staying on Disney property, you're always able to hop to a different resort for, like, their dining and amenities. You just can't pool hop? No, you can't pool hop. Um, You can't use another resort's pool. But you can eat anywhere you'd like to. Um, So this is another great option for that. I think it'd be cool to go there and get, like, an appetizer and get... So the wings are good. We've had the wings. The teriyaki chicken wings. Those were good. We got that last time. Oh, yeah. Those teriyaki chicken wings are really good. And they have, obviously, your burgers. I've had the burgers were really good. They have... It's a little bit smaller of a menu. Yeah, it is a smaller menu, but the, the things that they have, they do well. Um, their drinks are always really good there. To me, they have a good wine selection. And I remember last time we were there, I was like, I, I asked the cast member because it was warm outside. And I said I wanted red wine with an ice cube in it. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I know that that's not like kosher. And she's like, are you kidding me? You're going to be getting your wine in like a plastic cup. So I love going to a place like that that has like a great atmosphere, but it's not going to be like... It's not going to be stuffy in any way, you know? Um, this is another one where you can spend some time, too, because you're if you've never been to that resort, you walk around that resort, you, you're by the water, you can, you know, we sell the fireworks in there, so you can definitely... You can also see the electric, uh, the electrical water project float by, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which... We saw it. Yeah, we, we saw it. We saw it a couple of times. Somebody that's, cracked. That's, that's one of the things that we love about Wilderness Lodge, if you've never been there before, is it's so incredibly detailed and immersive. Um, you don't really feel like you're on the other side of the Magic Kingdom, even though you are, and that's a great perk to that resort, but you're just immersed in the atmosphere. And that's our pro, that's one of our pro tips. What? Go to, go to restaurants, not at where you're staying. Yes. Because then you get to, you, you feel like you're staying there anyway. Yeah. And you can hang out there for a half a day. Yeah. So what you could do is you could... Go to Magic Kingdom for the day, and if you're like trying to catch a game for the evening, just take the boat from Magic Kingdom over to Wilderness Lodge, and you actually get off the boat right there by Geyser Point. So that's another great place to go to, too. Um, as a plot twist, I forgot about one of our favorite locations, which is back at Coronado Springs, which would be Three Bridges Bar and Girl. Mm-hmm. They have TVs there, too. They don't have as many TVs. I want to say they have like four TVs. But it's the same feel too. It's an open, open air, like no, you know, brick wall type of restaurant. And then, it, yeah, you're literally like on a where the bridges meet. And that's a, they have a really, really good menu. Yeah. It's, so Three Bridges Bar and Grill is like Tony said. It's where the bridges meet. It's actually called like Three Bridges Bar and Grill Villa de Lago de Coronado. That one's kind of tougher to get into, isn't it? Um, so that one actually has a walk-up wait list too. We haven't eaten there since like the COVID restrictions were more enforced. So I don't know if now, like you can, you can also get on the walk-up wait list. Um, if you're not staying at Coronado Springs, I don't know, like I would, I would want to make a effort just to go there, just to eat at Three Bridges. Um, but it may be out of the way since Coronado only offers bus transportation, just depending on like what your preferences are. But in contrast to a lot of the other places on this list, all our American food, um, Three Bridges Bar and Grill has like a like Latin American food, like fusion. Yep. That's it. What's the open air setting of a Spanish American ambience and cuisine? And looking at the menu, since you threw this one on. <laughs> Sorry. The number of completion seven. 
They do have. <laughs> we've had the guac, house meal guacamole. They got roasted corn. I dip. they got that's, the corn dip too. That's good. They got hummus. They've got obviously your salads, entrees. They got braised pork tacos. They have a poke bowl. They also have a um, a harissa lamb chop, which is basically like a deconstructed gyro. When we went to um, Three Bridges Bar and Grill, I got that. So that's actually it's they haven't Three Bridges actually has an allergen menu um, that you can look at there. That's actually not on there, but I just didn't eat the um, the pita bread. So going back to the games, it's kind of like the boathouse, a little more kind of upscale you're not gonna have as many tvs right it's kind of just around the bar you can kind of glance see what's going on unless you're sitting in the bar it's probably not the, the best place to watch games but you can still make it happen the bar is pretty cent- bar is pretty centrally located to the restaurant too and i would think that during the like super bowl they would probably have like the the audio going as well um three bridges bar and grill is actually also known for their sangria flights which is something that's really fun on saturdays they offer sangria university so you can learn how to make sangria and stuff. When we went to Three Bridges, I got the sangria flight, and I was trying to content and convince Tony that we needed to add another night onto our trip. Remember? We remember. And Tony told me our pocketbooks remember. <laughs> Tony told me he said, um, "If you sing be our guest in this restaurant, then I then we'll add on an extra night." And I was like, "Done." So it was an expensive song. We <laughs> we um I we were sitting at the bar and the bartender was encouraging all of this and so we were sitting at the bar and she was laughing and I was like I don't care I'm at Disney World I was like I will sing beer guess I will sing that anywhere it doesn't matter to me but I like belted it out in the middle of the restaurant so we got to stay an extra night at Disney World and book another night. That's it. Yeah. Well, we got seven there and then there's probably a lot more comment. Tell us what your favorites are. There's a couple of our favorites we've been to, um, all but one. Yeah, let us know. Let us know which um, location is your favorite. If you watch games at Disney World, I know that I've talked asked about this in like forums before, not forums, Facebook groups, and people in the Facebook group are like hating on me for like wanting to take myself out of the Disney bubble. You're not doing that. You're just immersing yourself. You're still in the Disney bubble, but you're just incorporating other parts of your favorite things about life. And it just makes it even that much more memorable. I love all of our memories from watching games at Disney, whether it was um, at the Boathouse our first time or eating at Big River Grill. Even like even though the food wasn't great, that was still such a fun atmosphere. You're still at Disney. Um, it was it was such a fun atmosphere. So I don't feel like you can go wrong with it. Can't go wrong. Just know what you're getting into. What kind of food you want? Yeah, I guess the only place that's not there anymore is the ESPN Club at the Boardwalk. I never went. I know we never went. Tony wanted to go to the ESPN club so bad, we got a chance. which we heard that the food wasn't that great, but it's a Disney trend, yeah. <laughs> but, um, he wanted to go there nonetheless and it never reopened after COVID and now is turning into the tea place. Yes. Tea the party? bake shop. Yeah. The tea, the tea. I don't remember. Sit down and have a cup of tea. Yeah. The tea house. Grandma. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I've heard the food's supposed to be really good, but yes, it did take over the ESPN club. So, um, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Double Dose of Disney podcast. That is going to do it for this week, but we will see you back here real soon. And as we always say at the end of every episode, go ahead and give us a follow on at Double Dose of Disney fam on Instagram or TikTok. Send us any suggestions you have for any other episodes. Let us know your favorite places to watch games at Walt Disney World, and we will see you guys next time. See you next time.